We're excited to announce a new update to the Patch System Software Controller, Patch App version 2.1. 2.1 comes loaded with additional features, bug fixes, and a new customizable user experience. But rather than talking about it, let's jump in and take a look at it. So as soon as you download Patch App version 2.1, you can immediately notice it's a little bit more of a cleaned up, updated, and modernized looking aesthetic. Everything has the same basic placement, but there's a lot of added features that we built into the background here that we're gonna take a look at right now. One of the most obvious changes you note when you open up the new version of the app is the new toggle selections located at the bottom of each individual path. You'll already know these probably by taking a quick look at them. From left to right here we have a new solo, a mute, and then we have our clear button. This now allows you to feel like you're working within a DAW with your actual hardware by being able to solo entire paths or mute entire paths. I'll show you an example of this. Here I have three different active paths in my active routing grid. I want to solo path two so I can just hear it on its own. Just simply now by clicking the S, I can solo this and listen to only this path. Conversely, if I want to be able to listen to two paths and I want to just have one muted, I can actually just hit M or mute on path three and listen to path one and two together. Now let's say hypothetically I have two muted and I have a larger grid layout here. I can unmute all of these and return it to its normal operating state by simply holding command and clicking any of the muted channels here. And now we're back to all the paths being active. Same thing with solo. If I have multiple paths here soloed and I don't want to unclick them all to get back to the regular active routing, all I have to do is hold command and click S and it opens them all back up again. On the performance side of things, we recalibrated the app to be 50 to 60% faster when recalling routings. This is a great thing to have when you're A, B, or Cing different signal chains. It'll now perform that much better and recall those routings that much quicker. We've now added a brand new way to access your hardware right from the active routing grid. Let's take a look at how this is done. By choosing any of the available paths here, whether they're populated with an active signal chain or not, I can right click on it and choose the hardware menu. This is an exact copy or duplicate of my hardware index, but it's now accessible right in the active routing grid. So I can set up an entire signal chain by just simply right clicking and choosing the preferred gear I want to place into an available slot. This makes it feel so much more like you're working with an DAW, but you're working with your hardware. This is a great way to be able to access all of your hardware index and populate entire paths by just simply right clicking on them. As with every update, we're always looking to integrate new seamless controls to make it a better user experience. We've added two brand new key commands to navigate throughout your active routing grid. You can see here on the screen, I can now bank throughout the entire grid by simply using my comma and my period keys. If I need to be more precise, I can navigate path by path throughout the grid by using my left and right arrow keys. So this is great not having to go and physically click the toggle selections located at the bottom of the patch app. You can just use your keys to go throughout the active routing grid. A little added bonus feature in case you're not into using key commands, you can never remember them, is the ability to take any digital rack space, hover it over the edges of the active routing grid and scroll throughout the grid. By now you may have noticed that the 48 volt icon is missing on the bottom of the top row of each path. This isn't an oversight, this is a brand new cleaner looking aesthetic and an additional safety measure we've added in to 2.1. Now I'm going to show you how this new 48 volt feature works. You'll notice in the top row of the patch app there's no 48 volt icon allowing me access to turn on phantom power. However, if I go into my hardware setup here and I navigate down to channel 13 where my U87 is, you'll see that it's set to allow 48. So now when I go and I drag this U87 into the first slot of any available path, it automatically populates access to my 48 volt phantom power. If I'm trying to put a microphone in the same slot that doesn't allow 48 volt phantom power, such as my V13 by Vanguard, it immediately removes that 48 volt phantom power icon, not allowing me to access it. 
This is a great safety measure in case you accidentally drag and drop a piece of gear or a microphone into a slot that doesn't need 48 volt phantom power. We've started to add in customization options built into the Patch App software. You can access this by going to Settings, User Preferences, and then choosing the Customize tab at the top of the menu. Here you'll see we have the ability to show or hide various options throughout the Patch App. Anything that is not in use is defaulted as an unassigned rack space here in your hardware index. You can choose to show or hide this by clicking this little checkbox indicator. When it's illuminated on, it'll show it by default. If it's not illuminated, it'll hide any of the unassigned rack spaces. Below that, we have our front I.O. toggle controls. This means if you're not ever really using your front I.O. toggle, such as these two toggles right here, you can hide them from your patch app. I'm going to show you this example. Now you can see that the front I.O. toggle is gone or missing from our patch app. Of course, you can turn these back on by selecting front I.O. toggles. If you're not using your clear all paths button, you can hide this as well. Now that we have a key command to bank throughout the various paths in the active routing grid, you can choose to hide the banking toggle control as well. You can choose to hide the undo redo controls. And then down here, we have the auto display 48 volt icon detection. This is the feature we just talked about before this segment where it'll allow you to hide all the 48 volt icons. Now, if you're more partial to having this show, you can remove this and automatically it'll repopulate the 48 volt icon on the top row of each individual path. This is really up to you and your personal preference on what you want to see in your patch app. At the bottom here, we have a customization option called Recall 48 when stored in routings. Now, I do not recommend enabling this. The reason being is by default, the patch system software does not allow you to set up a routing with 48 volt phantom power enabled, store it and recall it so the 48 automatically turns on again. This is a safety feature. The reason being is if you have a physical setup and something changes such as a condenser microphone gets swapped out for a ribbon microphone and you recall that routing without knowing that you made that change, you will damage that piece of gear. So we always recommend against using this feature. However, there are a lot of customers who requested it and there's the reason why we added it to 2.1. It's a great feature if you're using the system to audition multiple microphones and swapping them in and out of signal chains. So A and B for comparison, and you don't want to have to enable the 48 each and every time. But be forewarned, this could cause damage if anything changes in your physical signal chain. We made the multi-unit setup menu even easier and more flexible than ever before by adding in 37 new presets to help you connect and configure multiple patch or patch LT systems together. I'm gonna to show you how the new multi-unit setup works in 2.1. Go to settings and multiple unit setup. Here you'll see overall it looks pretty much similar to 2.0. However, we've now added 37 new input and output passes. I'm going to go ahead and set up a patch LT model so I can expand my I.O. I can do this by going to my input output passes and choosing any one of these options. To keep it simple, I'm going to choose input and output passes one through four. Immediately, you'll notice it'll populate the next available patch model. I can choose a different patch model by clicking the drop down menu, but I'm going to keep the patch LT. Right now, this means that I'll have four signals that I can send to and from each model. To the right hand side here, we have our unit color assignment. Every time you add a new patch model, it'll automatically choose a different color, whatever is next in line, to assign in your hardware index. I'll go ahead and save this setup. Now you'll see in my hardware index, it's automatically changed one through four to sends, and it's given both patch models a colored border so I can identify which model is which. Now I want to set up a quick routing to show you how multi-unit setup works within Patch App version 2.1. I'm going to go out of my converters, into an EQ, and then I need to access the compressor which is set up and connected to my Patch LT model. This is really easy to do. I'll choose any of the available sends that I set up in the multi-unit setup menu, and as soon as I drag and drop it in place, it populates a receive with a colored border. 
This means that it's acknowledging and telling me that we now have access to all of the gear in our Patch LT because of the color coding. I'm gonna scroll down to my Patch LT and I'm gonna choose my compressor. And now I need to get back to my patch model from my LT. You can see at the top here, because we set up both sends and receives, or input and output passes in the multi-unit, I can choose any of the available sends and it'll behave exactly the same as the other send which was set up to the patch model. Now I'm back into my patch and I can go back and choose a converter in. And it's just that easy to set up multiple units and route between them using the patch app software. The patch system software has never been this powerful before. You're going to absolutely love the new features and customization options. If you own a Flock Audio patch, please head on over to flockaudio.com downloads to download 2.1 today. If you don't have a patch system and you want to learn more, please contact your preferred Flock Audio dealer to find out how they can help you get a patch or patch LT into your studio. From all of us at Flock Audio, thank you and happy patching.